What does it mean to you to be a writer? Writing is putting down in a physical space what only I can see in here. So writing is the act of basically transmuting my inner world into the outer world so that you can see what's going on inside me in a way that is different from when we have a conversation. Because writing has a really different voice from when we speak. I don't know. Some people write exactly the way they speak and I'm like, yep, I know, especially over text. Like I know over text, I text the way that I talk, right? But that's very different from how I approach creative writing. My, my voice as a creative writer is different from how I speak, I think. So it's, it's just a, it's showing your inner world to the rest of the world. What compels you to write? Knowing that I have a story that only I can tell and knowing what it could do for people. You know, being like, either it's a story that I'm really excited about, you know, it's not, it's not as on the nose. I, my feature script is, is just literally an excerpt from my life that I think people should know about. Um, but in terms of, you know, whether it's, it's something that's a little bit more lighthearted and fun um, or not, it's just knowing that no one else is gonna tell it. And I have to be the one to do it. So it's like, all right, you know, make time, schedule in your writing time as often as you can so that it gets, it gets told, it gets done, you know. You've created the thing. And then you can go into the rewrite process and keep playing and exploring and growing and go from there. Can you walk us through your writing process? Interesting you say that. You know, we were talking about the difference between student and artist. I'm very much still a student of creative writing. You know, I'm, I'm still developing my process is what I should say. I'm working with a mentor right now who specifically works to help female writers find an organic process that works for them. So it's not about like, by the end of this course, you'll have a feature film ready to go. It's very much a like, how do you not hate this? <laughs> That's how I would brand her course. Um, so I'm, I'm still discovering. I'm still discovering every day. And it's, it's fun to be in a... I really like being in a discovery process. It's, it's the best part of it, in my opinion, because there's no pressure. There's no like, oh, I have a deliverable that's due in eight weeks. It's like, cool, let's try this. Do I like it? Do I hate it? I don't know. Let's try this. How do I feel about prompts? How do I feel about um, what do I do when I'm in a writer's block? You know, when I'm like, wow, I don't want to ever look at that script again. I don't want to write it. You're going to today. Um, if anything, I, I, I really sincerely wish I made more time for it. I think um, lately producing and acting has been so like poof, busy in my life that it's like I almost have sidelined it a bit. And I definitely have a goal of during the holiday season making it a daily practice again. And I'm excited about that because I think, I think there's a longevity and a freedom to finding a way to create your own stuff completely independently in this business. As much as, you know, why art is beautiful is because of collaboration, right? As much as I fundamentally believe that, it is also just like, it feels like a vacation to be like, I'm going to tell a story. It doesn't matter if anyone ever sees it. Only I am telling the story. The end. Um, that is, it's a great way to flex that creative autonomous muscle, as it were, right? Being like, how would I tell the story? Again, it goes back into that sort of just overall artistic sensibility and process. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think so much of it is about carving out time. One thing I learned from her is to set like a little timer and be like, here's a prompt and you get 90 seconds. And even if you have more to say, you don't get to say it. So all of a sudden, every time you do a prompt, you're like, ah! you know, like get as much as you can. And it really like, it stops any BS from, from interrupting your flow. You're just like, okay, I'm in the flow. And sure enough, after a couple of prompts, you're, you just, you're like, I hate that rule. I'm just going to keep writing. And all of a sudden you're writing. It's a great way to kind of like bust through all of the excuses that we come up with for not writing. Cause she's like, that's writing for 90 seconds a day. I think you can make 90 seconds. And she's right. And it always turns into more, which is great. So you have this writing coach, but you also have this high school teacher that it sounds like was very influential. Yeah. Do you still hear her 
I do, I writing. do. And also there is like, um, I've just read a gazillion de scripts from being an, a working actor for 10 years, right? Like I, oh my God, it's almost been 10 years now. Oh. Um, I've, I've read so many scripts that I know what is effective and what isn't to a degree of like, cool, I wrote a scene and I can objectively be like, this scene is trash. That didn't work, let's try something else. As opposed to, God, I feel like when you really get into the flow with a character, that character writes for you. It's like this really trippy thing that I, I wish everybody could experience once in their life because you're like, am I possessed right now? But once you get like a really clear sense of who your character is, like their backstory, what influences them, all the same questions that you ask yourself, right? Of like, who am I? What are my values? What are my beliefs? Doing that for each character, they actually tell you what they want to do and say. Like, you'll be like, this is the scene where this happens. And like, as I'm writing, I'll be like, no. Like Roseanne, I'm making up a name. Roseanne doesn't want to do that. The scene's going this way. And then I'm like, whoa, what did that just do to my story? So I think like there has to be that discovery process. I think all too often I see this very clinical approach to writing in the industry of like, I'm going to do five pages a day, which is like, yeah, are you? I don't know. Is that really, when you're comparing like a random script to like George R.R. R. Martin and his world, right? George and like, I love the guy and one day we'll get the winds of winter. Um, but he really takes his time because he's building a world, right? And he gets very clear and specific about how that world works to a level of detail that I'm like, that's your gift, it's not my gift and I'm very happy for you. Um, that's your unique genius ability. But I think you have to make it a three-dimensional world. You know, you have to really get to know your characters almost, like take your characters out on proverbial little dates to get to know them. Um, think about all the different situations. I mean, some people say that writing is like the greatest form of being a sociopath because you like make these beautiful people and get to know them and love them and then you put them in terrible situations and that is writing. Um, <laughs> And indeed, that is like conflict in a script. But um, I, re I think you can tell when someone has taken the time to build a world and when someone is like, here's my concept and there's no depth to the writing. You can always tell. You can always tell. You said earlier that there's going to be sometimes when that script's in the drawer and you don't want to look at it. Mm -hmm. Why would that be? Something that you created that you were once excited about, what would put a damper on that? A lot of reasons. Um, for the feature I'm working on, for me, it's like it's almost too close to home, like it's too vulnerable. And I need to do a lot to like make my space feel safe to be able to explore that. Um, but other times it's like, you know, if if you're painting the same sparrow over and over again, at some point you're gonna be like, if I paint another sparrow, I'm going to burn it, right? Like I don't, you dare make me paint another sparrow. Um, and you just need to do something else. I think so much of being an artist is like, where do you find your, your font of inspiration? And I feel like it's this nebulous thing that we're all chasing, right? I mean, you know it, it's like, sometimes you get inspired from the most random thing. Like I'll get inspired from like a dish of food and I'll be like, Whoa, wow, that opened up this whole thing. And it may or may not be related to what I'm working on. It might be like, wow, here's this like totally weird new idea that I have. And I think it's important to go chase that because there's something, even if that idea doesn't turn into like a fully fleshed out thing, you're gonna learn something from that that's gonna make the sort of tidying in your desk drawer feel fun again. Have you ever thought about not writing something so personal? Because- Yes. Okay. And I am yeah. working on that as oh, well Oh, you are, right now. okay. Yes. Because then it wouldn't be where, there might be other issues, yeah. but it wouldn't be that, oh, this is revealing too much. I don't know if I want to go there or whatever. Oh, else. yeah, no. I'm, I'm working on one that couldn't be further from me. And that one's really fun. It's it's a lot of, lot of, lot of fun because it's there's research then involved, you know. And I, I should say with the caveat, not like me trying to write the story of a people that I am not a part of, you know, because I think... When people are like, I'm gonna write about this this group of people and I am not of that race or, uh, or gender, or, you know, whatever have you. Um, I think that sometimes yields not great results. But for me, it's like I'm, 
I'm writing a script of like an era that is completely foreign to me. And so it's really fun to do the research and it's fun to be like, ooh, what's good? In fact, that's, that's like my candy script. Like it's like, here's my treat because you did the script that's medicine, you know? And why do the script that's medicine? Is it really necessary to get something yeah. so personal out? It is for me. World? It is for me. Um, it kind of crystallized for me when I was giving a talk. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to talk about it, but I was actually institutionalized for my mental health. I was involuntarily committed in 2019. And it was a terrible, terrible time. Um, you know, there were human feces on the ground. They didn't feed us. Uh, there were bars on the windows. If you wanted to go outside, you could sit in a cage. It was a horrific dehumanizing process. And I, I honestly um, had a good experience with the other people in the center. But it was like a, it was almost like an Alice in Wonderland story in a way of like, oh my God, where am I? This is like a totally new paradigm. Um, and for me, it was like, I want people to know that we have so thoroughly defunded that system that when you need it, not if, but when you need it, you're not going to a happy place. <laughs> you're going to a very scary, traumatizing place. Um, so yeah, I do really feel like it's an important story to be told. I don't think most people know what those places are like. And it's something that I know only I can tell because it's my lived experience. So something like a Prozac Nation or um, Girl Interrupted, is that yeah, like Yeah, yeah, or like I'm Short Term or... 12, like something like that, you know, of like, what's it like to be in a facility? What happens to you? And not in a way, like, I think there's a lot of movies about the mental health hospital system that like starts to get corny where you like see people, you know, who have something like schizophrenia who are doing things and all of a sudden it's like schmacting on camera and you're like, Ugh, what, what message are we saying? No, I just want to talk about what it was like and tell, like not in a documentary perspective, but like really not try to get into other people's stories. Like obviously there are supporting characters. It's a huge ensemble cast film. Um, but really try to steer away from any kind of representation that's going to invoke two-dimensional judgments from the audience and instead be like, here are people who needed care who didn't get it. And also here are the people trying to give care who don't have the resources to give it. And all of a sudden they're pitted against each other in this barren, violent space. Um, and everyone's just trying to survive, you know? Have you had second thoughts ever about getting it out there or it's something that you know you need to do? Yeah, I know. I know I need to do it. I'm not in a rush, right? Like it's like I know when there are times to work on it, it's going to be the right time to work. Not a very eloquent way to say that, but um, I, I'm not rushed about it. I'm not hurried. I'm not like I have to tell a script or else my life won't have meaning or I'm not like 95 trying to like churn out my last screenplay. It's... Um, I'm really being gentle with myself in that process. And also I have this fun candy script that I'm really excited about. I'm a big horror junkie and it's like a, a new spin on horror that I'm experimenting with. So it's fun to just like dive in and tell a totally bizarre story. 